Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Essential Presents. So we want recently put out on the internet uh, the question of what do you want Father Mike to talk about or answer any questions? And so someone said, a couple of people I think, um, they've asked this question before, and people ask it all the time. How come, the, God, the question is this, how come the God of the Old Testament seems so much more harsh and uh, judgmental and oriented towards justice than the God of the New Testament, who seems more kind and gentle and merciful? And I think, great question. There are two reasons for this. One is, you haven't read your Bible. That's why, I mean, kind of, I mean, I'm saying this tongue in cheek and I'm saying this like just kind of poking fun, so keep, please uh, take my sarcasm with a grain of salt. I'm poking fun. But whenever anyone says the God of the Old Testament seems more kind, gentle, or opposite, uh, harsh, judgmental, etc., and God, then the God of the New Testament who is kind and gentle and merciful, they've just basically said they have not read their Bible because, or at least they haven't paid attention to the Bible, because it is absolutely, fundamentally, obviously clear that in the Old Testament, God reveals himself, yes, to be um, clearly communicating to his people what right and wrong are, and that there's a consequence for choosing right and a consequence for choosing wrong. But he also reveals his heart to be the heart of someone who loves, the heart of a God who is, is long-suffering, the heart of a God who lets himself get beaten up by his people who turn away from him. I mean. Not only are there are so many psalms about uh, God's heart that reveals his heart of being, again, long-suffering, patient, forgiving, but also, and also even, sorry, even the historical books that, that reveal that, okay, here's God's people turn away, and he comes back, brings them back, and they turn away, and he brings them back. But there's also this beautiful book of the prophet Hosea, um, where the people of Israel, the people of God's chosen people, are likened to an adulterous wife. That the, the groom, the husband, God himself, says, like, I'm not going to cut you off. I'm going to actually, I'm going to lead you into the desert and I will speak to your heart. And you, once again, you'll give me your heart. And even if you give, your, give me your heart simply because your, your idols or your false loves have, have not delivered, like, I don't care. I just want your heart back. I just, I just love you. So this is the picture, more full picture of God in the Old Testament. Also, in the New Testament, spoiler, there is one person in the entire Bible who speaks more about hell than any other person in the Bible, and his name is Jesus. So Jesus speaks more about hell, judgment, condemnation, divine justice, than pretty much anyone else in the Bible. So again, yes, wait, 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 wait good, merciful, kind Jesus, the when Jesus says, come to me all you who are labor and burdened, I'll give you rest. Yes, the same, same God also is very, very clear about the consequences of our choices, just like God in the Old Testament, same God, is clear about the consequences of our choices of good or of evil. It's the same God. And both Old Testament and New Testament, in both of them, God reveals himself to, yes, be intensely interested in justice and intensely merciful in both. Okay, but Father, that's fine, fine, fine. But why does it seem like in the Old Testament, he's more interested in justice and in the New Testament, more interested in mercy. There's a number of reasons. Here's one I'm just going to give you through uh, by way of analogy. If you have a good mom or dad, I have, I have a good mom and dad. Let me just give you my example. I have a great mom, I have a great dad. Um, but if you were asking me or my siblings growing up uh, about our, our parents, we would say, oh my gosh, we're like, the, they're the strict parents. They were the strict parents. Like all the other friends would be like, oh, okay, yeah, we're not going over to the Schmitz's. Like, it's, their mom and dad are pretty strict. Like, that kind of a thing. No, not everyone was, just, was afraid of my mom and dad. In fact, my friends were not afraid of my mom and dad. My siblings' friends who were trying to get away with stuff were afraid of my mom and dad. But my friends who were good, straight-laced kids, not trying to mess around too much. Anyways, but the point is, my parents had to reveal themselves to be strict. They had to reveal themselves to be deeply interested in justice and doing the right thing when we were growing up. Later on, as I got to know them better as like an adult, I'm like, wow, mom and dad are, they're really funny. Mom and dad are really, like they like to, um, all the positive things too, right? They're, they're patient and they're kind. They're like, oh my gosh, I thought they were so strict back then, but they were so flexible. I didn't even realize this, this whole time. Now, it's not because my parents became different, like they became two different people than they were when I was a kid. But they were always this way, but they revealed themselves to me and to my siblings as like, no, we're interested in do this thing, you know, show up on time or else you're grounded, uh, do the chores or else whatever. Why? Because they knew that that's with how they had to, re they had to reveal themselves to 
us at that time because that's what we needed at that time. And as we grew up, they were able to reveal more and more of themselves to us. Now, they were the same person the whole time. In fact, even in the midst of that strict season of you know, the parenting, they reveal themselves to be kind and gentle and forgiving and merciful and wise. I just didn't realize that. And my siblings and I, we look back and we have all the fun stories about like, remember when you got in so much trouble for this and this and mom and dad were like this and this? We could look back and say, remember all the times that they were patient with us? Remember all the times they forgave us? Remember all the times that they were really, really funny that we didn't necessarily notice until later on in our lives? They were the same people the entire way through. Now, it, of course, the analogy breaks down and the metaphor breaks down because uh, parents actually do change and God does not change. So it could be that your parents were strict and then they like, don't care anymore so they are more relaxed. But when it comes to God, he doesn't change. He is one. He's perfect. So he, he doesn't change but our experience of him gets to change. So when people say, how come God seems to have changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from just to merciful, it's because A, they have not read their Bible. And because of B, God doesn't change, but is our experience of him as he reveals his heart to us. We get exposed to various layers of his heart that he needs to establish for us that where he needs us to know that real right, real wrong have real consequences. And also in the midst of the real consequences, he's willing to take upon himself the cost of our decisions. But without the first, we can't have the second without the whole thing held together with this common understanding that yes, yes, there is divine justice, but there's also divine love, to have that whole thing knit together, we will only be getting a one-dimensional, maybe two-dimensional vision of God. So, hope that helps. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless and like, subscribe, comment. Maybe that made sense. Maybe there's another video out there that I made like three years ago that speaks about this in a more coherent way. I don't know, but search for it. Maybe you'll find it. I don't know. I'm just going to drift off to the side here. The rest of the room.